Good morning. Welcome to worship. We are very thankful that you worship with the Bethel Luton Church this morning. While we cannot be together in person, we can hear the word of God and hold each other in prayer from wherever we are. Let's take a deep breath together and invite the Holy Spirit to be amongst us. The spirit that connects us with one another and allows us to see each other as human beings, regardless of flaws, imperfection, and the messy people we are. The spirit that gives life. The life when it takes away from one affect all of us. Good morning. Um, our ministry of Bethel Lutheran Church Women, or BLCW, is our thanks and praise offering. Our women are invited to put aside some money as tokens of their thanks when, well, they're thankful. Once a year, we collect this money and give half of it to Fresno Community Food Bank and half to, Lu half to Lutheran Campus Ministries, two organizations that make an impact in our community. So if you've been setting aside your money for this, or if you haven't but would like to support these ministries, now's the time to send it into the church office. Uh, to P.O. Box 11278, Fresno, California, 93772. In the past, we've encouraged you to bring in your coins, but this year, due to COVID, we prefer that you mail a check made out to BLCW and mark thanks and praise in the memo section. It's been a rough year, but God has been good, and we have, are thankful for all of you. Good morning. We're going to reflect on our stewardship to God and our church. The word tithe means tenth in Hebrew, and it refers to giving money. De Deuteronomy 14.22 speaks of setting aside one-tenth of the field's produce each year as a tithe to God. Honoring God with a tenth of our gross income means give first to God before we do anything else with our money. A steward for our church means being a caretaker. We're responsible for our church's expenses, like the wages for our pastor, secretary, bookkeeper, paying the electricity bill, building repairs, insurance, etc. When we contribute one-tenth of our income, we become more aware of the needs of others. Tithing to our church demonstrates gratitude. It's an attitude of love that comes from our hearts. St. Francis of Assisi preached that we're most like God when we're giving. God loves a cheerful giver. That's 2 Corinthians 9, 7. As we continue life's journey, money and possessions can become central in our lives. We tend to pursue earthly treasures. Thinking about stewardship is a time to reflect on our spiritual connection. Are we rich toward ourselves, but not rich towards God? Matthew 6, 4 is about not storing up our treasures on earth, where things can age and rust, or where thieves can steal them. There was once a very rich man who was on his deathbed, and he spoke to an angel and said, I've taken all my riches and converted them to gold bars so that I can take them to heaven. And the angel said, you're not allowed to bring anything to heaven. And the man begged and pleaded. So finally, the angel said, okay, you can take one suitcase when you go. So when the rich man arrived at heaven's gate, St. Peter greeted him and said, you're not allowed to bring anything but yourself inside. And the man said to the angel, excuse me, the man said, but 
an angel gave me permission to bring one suitcase. And St. Peter said, okay, open up your suitcase and let's see what you've, you're bringing in. Well, when the man opened up the suitcase, St. Peter, Peter exclaimed, pavement? You're bringing in pavement? Invest in God because we can't take it with us when we go. Let's, time t let's take the time to reflect on our weekly, monthly, or yearly stewardship amount and make the pledge by using this card to record our amount and mail it to our church. Make your money work for God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, soften our hearts. Help us to make a decision about our stewardship amount. We know that we receive blessings daily from you, and we're grateful for your gifts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We are here to receive Christ. We are here to proclaim Christ. We are here to show Christ. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. To the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. To the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and son, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit, and we know our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Our opening song, song is on page five in your bulletin, Crown Him with Many Crowns.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is from Ezekiel, chapter 34, verses 11 to 16 and 20 to 24. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice, Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed the flank with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Thus ends the first reading. Our psalm for today is Psalm 95. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and, and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it. And your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. The second lesson is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the work of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Thus ends the second lesson. Okay. At this moment in time, we will continue with our prayer requests. Lord of all in need, search out all who cry to you in distress. 
scatter the heavy clouds of depression, chronic illness, unemployment, and loneliness with your radiant light. Send us as encouragement and signs of your healing. Please pray for Renee, Bob, Neil and Linda, Al, Michaela, Kevin, Sophia, Ken, Virginia, Don, Art, Jackie, Cecilia, Richard and Vicky, Ethel, Liam, Doris, Myrtle, Maria, Paul, Karen, Don, Tyler, Eloise, Tom, Carol, Dolly, Ed, Shirley, Crystal, Kristen, Pat, Connor and family, Pamela, Susan, Neil, Deirdre, John and Colleen, Alyssa, Albert, Lisa, Sandy, and finally Philip. Lord of the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all the saints that rest from their labours, especially Doris Poor, who passed away on November 16th at the age of 99. We pray for hope, comfort, help and healing as we deal with COVID-19 in our nation and in our world. At this time, we remember especially those who are most vulnerable to the disease, as well as those who are struggling with the many challenges of everyday life in a pandemic. We thank you for the rain, and cooler weather that have helped those who are fighting wildfires in our state. And we ask for your care for those who are recovering from the destruction. Give your church unity. Inspire all the baptised with the mind of Christ, where the church is powerful and where it struggles. Shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in us. We remember all those who risk their lives for others in the line of duty. And we ask that you bless them and their families as they serve to protect and help us. We pray for the work of ELCA World Hunger in bringing food and long-term solutions to the hungry throughout the world. We pray for our church, Lord, for Pastor Mitch, our church council, our church staff members, our COVID-19 reopening committee, the Sierra Pacific Synod, Bishop Mark Holmerud, and the people of Bethel, as we worship and serve together. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign for ever and ever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter.
When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep in his, at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father. In a read, the kingdom prepared for you from the fountain of the world, for I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave your, you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Surely I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of this, who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those of his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of this, you did not do it to me. And this will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory to you, O Christ. The sermon hymn is on page 8 in your bulletin. We give you thee but thine own. Today is Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday after Pentecost. Next Sunday, we enter into the season of Advent. Advent is the season of preparation for the second coming of Christ. The Feast of Christ the King was 
instituted by Pope Pius XI in 1925 when respect for Christ and the church was waning. It emphasizes that Christ is the jeweler in a Christian's life before and above any outside force or entity. And Christ the King Sunday was adopted by other denominations, including Lutherans. It's an emphasis that was needed then and is still needed today as the temptation to follow other voices has not vanished. In fact, a lot of us probably feel that it's worsened and become more powerful than ever. Our gospel reading for Christ the King Sunday is not only a parable, but also a picture of judgment. It is Jesus' final discourse in Matthew before his passion and crucifixion. Jesus has just spent time warning his followers that his death is coming and that they will face persecution. So while it is true that this apocalyptic parable is incredibly blunt, it also contains good news for its original hearers. The disciples know from Jesus' warnings that they could count themselves among those who will be hungry, sick, naked, and imprisoned. This parable puts the king in solidarity with the disciples suffering as one who suffers alongside them and who demands justice for the harm against them. I was hungry. I was thirsty. I was a stranger. I was naked. I was in prison. That's what the king says. The good news for the early disciples and for all of us who suffer, and we all do, is that Christ is with us in our pain. Christ does not rule as earthly leaders rule. Christ does not sit on a throne lording power over people while they suffer. And he certainly doesn't cause suffering. Christ our King suffers with us. Suffering is a reality for a growing number of people right now. We can see each of the conditions that Jesus talked about in the world we live in. The coronavirus pandemic has meant that many people have lost their job and feeling hunger is not a metaphor especially in the community of color. Nearly 40% of African-American families in the state of California only reported not having sufficient food to eat during the spring. So did 20% of low-income families. Our members who have been distributing food through the Lutheran Hunger Network and through one-on-one -on -one outreach to the poor in the hidden community of our valley can testify to the reality. Immigrant children who have been taken away from their families at our border, unable to reunite, definitely do not feel welcome as strangers. Hospitals are again reaching capacity as cases of COVID-19 rise and the sick are not able to receive visitors. People's loved ones are dying alone and the frontline health healthcare workers who could not save them weep in supply closets. Mass incarceration continues to disrupt, family, disrupt families and, and lives. The United States locks up more people per capita than any other nation. The safety of incarcerated people Medical staff and correctional officers are in jeopardy due to COVID-19. The homeless community is unable to self-isolate as evidenced by outbreaks in shelters. 
In the midst of such enormous suffering, the kingdom of God can feel far away, completely out of reach. But the amazing thing is that Matthew tells us Christ's kingdom is among us right now in the kindness and dignity his followers show to the people that the world deems disposable. The kingdom of God is not a country with borders. borders. There are no lines drawn by powers declaring who is in or out based on arbitrary maps. The citizens of the kingdom of God are recognized by the way they treat each other as neighbors, family, with, ding with, with dignity, respect, solidarity, and love. Likewise, the kingdom of God is not made up of one idealized race. Instead, the letter to the Ephesians tells us that it is made up of people of all nations, all races, all skin colors. There is no savior in this common wealth except the savior. We don't bow to any system or person demanding our uncritical obedience. No bosses, no masters, no idols deserve our allegiance. We pledge only to the sacrificial love and oneness exemplified by Christ. While it is true that Christ is coming to judge the nations, his teachings spell out a kingdom of justice and judgment balanced with radical love, mercy, peace, reconciliation, and forgiveness. When we celebrate Christ as king, we are not celebrating an oppressive ruler, but one willing to die for humanity and whose loving kindness endures forever. Christ is the king who gives us true freedom, freedom in him. Let us never forget that Christ radical redefined and transformed the concept. Let me say it again. Let us never forget that Christ radically redefined and transformed the concept of kinship. Praise be to Christ, the King of our lives. Amen. So we've been talking about stewardship of God's gift the last two Sundays. And today is the day we want to work on as the financial commitments that our members has, uh, have made to the church for the coming year. We thank you so much for that. This year, we'll use this offering box as a symbol of those commitment, as we pray a prayer of thanksgiving and blessing. So let us pray. <laughs> Loving God, everything we have and everything that we are is a gift from you. And we are so grateful. You call us to be stewards of your gift, and we thank you for that calling. As caretakers of all that you have provided, we give back now and dedicate our gift to you. Bless our offerings. Help us to use your gifts wisely and lead us as we share generously with others. Help our faithful stewardship to show you to others. We pray these things in the name of Christ, our King. Amen.
Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thou, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is on page nine in your bulletin, Beautiful Savior. Go in peace, be safe, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.